Welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast brought to you by Strava Craft Coffee. Strava CBD coffee is infused with both CBD and CBG. You can get it delivered to your doorstep every two, four, six, eight weeks, however frequently as you need it. You can order on StravaCraftCoffee.com. Now, first time buyers can get 25% off your first purchase with code DNVR25. Joining me today for a little coffee and Cooperstown conversation on the DNVR Rockies podcast. A very special guest, of course, I'm your host, Patrick Lyons of the DNVR Rockies podcast. Uh, There's a gentleman I got to meet last year. We hit it off. Uh, glad, glad to call him one of my friends. He's doing some amazing things. You may know him as the official plaque sculptor of the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. Does a lot of other great things, and we'll get into that, too. Thanks for joining me today, Tom Sushia. Yeah, how's it going? Great to join you, Patrick, and glad that... Uh, yeah, we were able to uh, meet and uh, had we had such a great time at, during uh, Larry Walker's Plaque Day. I you know, guess over the whole weekend, you know, that was such a good time and uh, great to uh, be friends with you, become good friends with you there. Yeah, I'm so glad you were able we're able to do this, particularly in your studio. So we'll get to see some uh, the the amazing work that that you've done. But right off right off the bat here, Tuesday night we got the announcement. There's already been six that have been elected by various veterans committee, but we've got a new member. David Ortiz, how how excited were you about this news here? Oh yeah, big time because I've always been a big fan of Big Pappy, uh, even though he's not a Cincinnati Reds <laughs> or Rockies, <laughs> you know. Um, and uh, yeah, he's always been one of the iconic figures, you know, the uh, certainly of the two uh, thousands, you know. And uh, and it was just it was just one of those people. He always seems like as a bigger than larger than life guy. And really friendly and a really good guy all around. So it's just uh, it's just really uh, great to hear that he, you know he's in the hall. And I, I think I wondered if uh, Edgar uh, Martinez Martinez like helped sort of pave the way for you know uh, you know all the uh, DHs. So yeah, really cool. Congrats, yeah. Big Pappy. <laughs> and I know you've been doing this since you know 2016. So you you got to design Edgar Martinez's plaque. We'll talk about Larry Walker's plaque here in a little bit. So it's it's obviously a a very exciting time and and a difficult task for a guy like yourself when you say Big Poppy he's larger than life. And so how do you capture uh, all of that in 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 just the face? And and I know you have a, a real interesting process. Uh, for doing that, and I, and I do want to hear about it, but let, let's talk about our guy, Larry Walker. Uh, obviously, it, it was fantastic here in Colorado to to finally have him get into the Baseball Hall of Fame on his his tenth and final year. Uh, what is that process like when you when you first learn about a, a player getting into the Hall of Fame, and and how do you go about thinking uh, uh, and and designing that plaque for that player? Yeah. So what happens is uh, the whole process to create these plaques is really a team effort, and it's uh, and I feel I'm just one L- one person in this whole team, which involves you know both the Hall of Fame folks and uh, Matthews International, who are the uh, bronze foundry uh, or what is the let's say bronze founders who uh, do all the uh, casting and finishing of the uh, actual plaques. You know, I do the sculpting and uh, the designing. And then the, all that uh, in the very beginning, the Hall of Fame folks, there's like a, a small group of them. There's uh, John Shostakovsky, which I think some of the viewers would know. And then also two other people, uh, Eric Stroll, you know, he's been at the Hall for a long time. And then Mary Quinn. Uh, so basically, I would say it's us three uh, or us four that uh uh, spearhead the whole project once someone is selected so they gather photos and and other information and things like that and they share it with me and then we go over it and uh and then from there i uh design uh the uh the composition on uh just on the computer first you know just to, like uh kind of photoshop things kind of play around with you know how they how big the head should look like what angles look the best you know all kinds of little things like that little design but yeah it's tough when you're trying to capture the soul and like the, the the greatness is just ahead, but you know, just where and just pretty much only showing like the collarbones at the most, you know. And uh, but it can I can I can see it can be done. Like example, like Ken Griffey, you know, Junior, you know, what what's he super famous for and all that is you know, his his big bright smile. So you know, we we can put that in there, you know. And then um, 
and other people like Trevor Hoffman, he's he's had that uh that really that game face, you know, and you know he's on that mound and he's intimidating, like, and you can put that, you can put those the expression and his eyes, you know, just that look into the piece. So th those are things that go first, and then once the hall, then we basically just we just communicate a lot through email and all that and uh, Google Drive and all that, and then. Uh, once everything like the general design is approved by the hall, then I proceed to work on the clay. So, for example, I'm just going to show you this. I got like a little, this is a template. So you all seen this, you know, on the actual plaques. The, uh, the, uh, this is this portion here. I'm going to try to move on because it's kind of hard to see this. <laughs> these and, and would that, would yeah. that be the template that's been used ever since that first class of, of Hall of Famers back in, you know, 1934, yeah. 35? Yeah, the design is is exactly the same but wow. the actual this particular version might have been made i'd say maybe in 1983 or so this was when matthews took over uh, to make uh doing the uh casting so but the design is the same uh but it's not the exact same one that was like say on babe ruth's plaque you know but it's uh yeah we got the laurel leaves and the uh the bats you know the iconic design they're sort of a you know, it's just a really beautiful design. I love it. You know, it's such a great design. And then you can see this here is like, yeah, this template, the frame has a little well in it. That's why I put clay in it, you know, and then I modeled the head. So I'm going to show you something real quick too. I got something on display here. So I got this example of a, another sculpture uh, that I've been working on uh, for, this is for uh, exact metrology. There's all this scanning for me, you know, like digital scanning. And so they're making their quote little hall of fame, <laughs> you know, so it's a lot of the employees. So this is basically the same clay that I use, you know, for the uh, hall of fame plaques for Cooperstown, you know, it's this uh, uh, gray green uh, 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 synthetic clay. It's like an oil-based clay, plastic, plastic, plasticine is what they call it. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah. so as you said, and, and when we talked last summer, you, 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 you mm -hmm. give a lot of credit to, to the hall because as you said, it's a collaborative experience oh, yeah. and totally. you make sure, and I know you've talked about the process and taking a picture from a certain era and taking those different mm -hmm. elements to make sure mm -hmm. that it's right. So it really almost guarantees that when you make this plaque, the player is going to love it. You're, you're not going to have that Cristiano Ronaldo situation. I'm sure you saw <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that's right. yeah. from a few years exactly. ago. You go, whoa, you, you missed a step. You guys always hit a home run when it comes that's to right. that, especially with the players. That's right. And that's you're absolutely right. You hit the nail on the head there because the, uh, yeah, one of the great things is that all the guys at the hall, like that's like Eric and Shasta, you know, oh, I just call him Shasta, John Shostakovsky and, and Mary Quinn. They're, you know, obviously mega baseball fans. They're super nerds of, you know, baseball. They know all the, and they've been following the careers of all these guys. So they, a lot of them, they know more about baseball and the history of baseball than even I do. And I love this stuff and I study my own, but, you know, so I feel really like I, you know, like really confident, you know, that we're trying to pick that iconic look and, you know, the guys, you know, obviously like Mike Piazza got to have the goatee and all those kind of things. And they just sit and looks, you know, now the only thing, this is interesting. Now, now people asked about like Ken Griffey Jr., for example, you know, about you know, the way I would have depicted would have <laughs> been, you know, back cap, you know, backwards and then maybe put the, uh, the uh, Mariners logo on this, you know, collar or something, but it was Griffey himself who wanted the cap forward, you know, you know, he, he said he wants to cap forward and, and it's really because it was a nice, he wanted to make sure that S logo, the, uh, this, the Mariners logo was really prominent, you know, and then it was, it was cause he was really thankful and he loves his fans over Mariners. So, you know, he wanted, that was his choice. <laughs> and know? the Mariners S too, I know, you know, it's one thing if you're working in graphic design, mm -hmm. <clears throat> And you're working on, you know, uh, with digital features and things of that nature. That's that's fine. You can get into the minutia, but you are doing this by hand, where you've got to get all those <laughs> yeah, little nooks yeah. and crannies, uh, especially if you're talking about the little compass that's included. Yes. In, in the that Mariners logo that that Griffey wore during the '90s. Yeah, that, and you're absolutely right because it's such a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah, the the <laughs> S the S logo, the yeah, Seattle's S logo. That is probably the most. Com one of the most complex ones and was challenging ones because yeah, yeah there's that the s the uh, the compass and then there's a little tiny baseball in the very center too you know <laughs> you know and uh, it looks cool though but yeah it yeah as a model because when i work on it it's like it, that that thing is you know it's like that big you know when i'm working on it you know it's 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 tiny so i i use like a little magnifying and i'm in there you know just like me kind of work <laughs> yeah i love that's it we need to get more reds in there the c logo you know 
you know, we, you know, that, that, that's easier, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, we need, we need more reds. We, <laughs> in the hall. Love that. Yeah. And, and, and we'll talk about your, your work with the reds as, as well as the, the Padres, which is something that I, I, I didn't realize I only found out recently. And, uh, that's a fantastic little outdoor hall of fame. They've got, yeah. that I've been to mm -hmm. many times, uh, for our friends down in Texas, the round rock express, you you've done work with that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll get in. <laughs> too. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll get into all of that, uh, mm -hmm. much like I, I know everyone's looking to get into all of our watch parties down at the DNVR bar on the corner of, of Colfax and York with Breckenridge Brewery, always on tap. Members, you know, you get a bigger beer when you're down at the DNVR bar. Now it's only 50 cents for your first month. An annual membership does get you a free T-shirt from DNVRlocker.com. Come out to those watch parties for Avalanche nuggets rams and buffs they're really kicking off definitely as we get closer to march madness you know we'll have the super bowl going on as well members only discord so you don't have to worry about talking about politics or a-holes you can talk to us directly the host personalities as well as other diehard fans like yourself speaking of diehards hey we're moving on to the championship round of the nfl playoffs and DraftKings sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the nfl is celebrating with a huge odds boost for new customers Counting down to Super Bowl 56, you can get 56 to 1 odds on any team. Bet just $5 and get 280 in free bets if your team wins. Not a new customer? Don't worry. You can still get in on the action. The same game parlays. That's where you combine multiple bets from the same game for an even bigger payout. So the more legs you add, the more money you can win. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. And best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code DNVR to get 56 to 1 odds on any NFL team. All you got to do is bet $5 to win 280 in free bets if your team wins. That's promo code DNVR for 56 to 1 odds at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 or older. Colorado only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for detail details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. Zero, zero. And as I mentioned, Breckenridge Brewery as the official beer of DNVR. Now's a real good time to tap into that Avalanche Ale, particularly Strawberry Sky Vanilla Porter Jr., always on tap. But now when you go out to get your tap pack, that 15-can sampler of their hard seltzer, that's the apple pear, black cherry, honeydew, mountain berry, and peach, you can get that anywhere and know that a part of the profits are going to the National Parks Conservation Association this year to help with prevention of forest fires. So, Tom, let's talk about that that Larry Walker plaque. That one was really fun for you mm -hmm. to do. And I think a lot of people here in Colorado would be glad to know that, in many ways, the Larry Walker plaque was more enjoyable to make than Derek Jeter's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, because, yeah, it was like when we were working with the, uh, working with uh, Shasta, Mary, and Eric, you know, and then uh, I think they really loved, there's a certain look for Larry, and then I really liked it too. And I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is, this is good because, you know, uh, Larry is, uh, even though he's a very friendly, just nice guy, like in person, but on the field, he's a, you know, he's a total badass. He was a tough guy, you know? And then, and I'm glad that the plaque captures had expression on his face. He's got like, I'm going to kick some butt kind of look, you know? And then, and then the eyes, they are very critical parts, you know, get that look like he's just got that piercing look. <laughs> and and the hair too, right? The yeah. hair, you get a little facial hair, so that's it right. add a, a lot of dynamism to yes. you know, the, the plaque in general, right? Yeah, that's one of the things I always talk about too. That facial hair is always really good for these plaques. So I was like, I always talk to like you know recommend like any of the if any of the pro uh, baseball players listening and watching in those podcasts and are potentially Hall of Famers. Yeah, grow a, grow a stash, grow a beard, or <laughs> get your hair, grow out your hair or something, do something, you know? <laughs> and then I guess Tim uh, Lincecum, I guess he's, uh, you know, he's on the uh, plaque recently, he's got the longer hair, so that's kind of cool, you know, something something different, so. <laughs> so we have uh, D-Line Co., our, our, yeah. one of our great designers, Eric Weedham. He mm -hmm. came up with a shirt right around the time that Larry Walker was first uh, elected to the Hall of Fame there in yeah. January of 2020. And so yeah. as a professional sculptor, what is and this is the shirt that I'm wearing today. You can get it at the DNVRlocker.com. What what was what is your thought on the quality of this plaque for Larry yeah, yeah. Walker? A little bit mocking, but at the same time, very genuine oh, yeah. and very, love, very heartfelt. Yeah, I love the creativity having his batting helmet backwards. Of course, that's good because he too kind of like with. Griffey had that iconic look. So that's pretty cool. I love that. It's different. 
And then I also love the maple leaves. <laughs> you know, I think that's a good touch. You know, as in a ditch in the uh, uh, laurel leaves for you know for uh, for obviously for Larry's uh, home country. So that's pretty awesome. I love that. And uh, yeah, I think that's really really cool. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Well, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can contract you to maybe we'll contract you to actually make one of these. You know, for uh, for the, for the bar yeah, that, yeah. that we've got. Yeah, and I, and I do want to share, you know, as, as, you, as you showed that frame, um, you know, you, you shared a lot of yeah. pictures with me. And, and so I did want to show the fans mm -hmm. and you could see like the detail of everything with Larry Walker here. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, it, it's amazing. You would think you would because I know in, in a lot of different artistic stylings uh, involved in sculpture, you make something very large and then it's shrunk down yeah. to a smaller version. Whereas in this case, sure. you work with something really small that gets blown up into something larger. Yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a challenge. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, it's a, it's a, it's quite a challenge working on this, this the the size and uh, yeah, but it's a, um, it's a, I'm used to working usually like life size or a little bit bigger than life size pieces, and then with these, it's kind of like a nice break though, I have to say. And then yeah, the, uh, yeah, but the the end results are really beautiful. I love how it ends up turning out with the. Uh, bronze so it's polished and then you have the pigment that you get the dark brown pigment that's put in there and then they kind of brush off the uh uh the uh the highlights and it has this really it has a lot of pop you know and, and of course the original looks fine but yeah the 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 final it just looks so good yeah, and for those watching you on the DNVR Sports channel on YouTube, mm -hmm. if you're listening to the podcast, fantastic. Mm -hmm. But do make sure you're going over to the YouTube channel so you can see some of these great images that we're putting on the screen, as well as Tom's amazing studio here. Uh, this is one of the photographs from your collection mm -hmm. of, of the plaque at Coors Field last year, which some people might not realize this is a very rare thing. The Hall of Fame does not take plaques off the wall to bring around. That's... <laughs> You know, obviously you don't want to drop the thing, but oh my gosh, it, that just can't happen. So it, it very, it's very rare. In fact, I didn't know that this was a thing that, that had even happened until this past year. I think they only did it four times in all of 2021. So that was fantastic that it was there at Coors Field. Hopefully most of you were able to see it. Uh, and there, you know, you got Larry with you and the plaque yeah. behind the scenes at Coors Field. I mean, that was such a wonderful day. You know, you, you got to be a fan for a day back uh, on oh, yeah. the 25th against the Giants. But what yeah. what was that like when you got to see Larry? Were you there actually when Larry got to see his plaque for the first time? Yeah, yeah. At, at Cooperstown, I went there. Yeah, I've been to, uh, I've attended every single induction weekend uh, since 2016. You know, every, I've never missed a single one. And of course, 2020, we didn't have one because, you know, COVID. But, you know, uh, and I, I just it's one of one of the big highlights of my whole year is going to induction weekend and seeing these guys get inducted and seeing their plaques for the first time. So, yeah, it was cool. It was just, uh, yeah, I mean, I know that Larry and his family loved loved the plaque. And, uh, you know, so it's just extra fun. And I got to see when they mounted the uh, plaque to the wall. So I remember, yeah, his brothers, you know, his uh, dad and you know a lot of other family members and friends are there to see that so it's just a very special so special yeah working with so many yeah. amazing hall of famers going back to 2016 that first class oddly enough as you said your cincinnati guy rooting for the reds and then yeah. king Griffey juniors in that first class yeah you, you couldn't have drawn up a better script absolutely absolutely because yeah griffey you know as i'll say is kind of like an adopted son of of uh cincinnati too because he went to uh, Moeller High School, which is like five minutes from where I was living, you know, so it was really cool. And, you know, Barry Larkin, of course, another Hall of Great, you know, great one, Hall of Famer, also went to the same school. Yeah, Moeller had, you know, high school, two <laughs> Hall of Famers, it's incredible. Yeah. And of course, Griffey is, you know, obviously one of the greatest of all time, you know, <laughs> and just, and yeah, to have that connection, the Cincinnati connection, that's just extra cool. Yeah, you've done some amazing work in Cincinnati. This is an example here of uh, a much larger piece, uh, <laughs> yeah. probably oversized from a, a human. It, it yeah, probably mimics great. that size. But Pete Rose sliding in, and again, the detail on the clay on the on the ground where you see his forearms digging in. Uh, how many years ago was this? And in fact, you you've designed all of the the statues that are around Great American Ballpark. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Since uh, 2003. Yeah. So when Great American Ballpark opened in uh, 03, then uh, 
the first of the uh, sculptures that I've created for them was unveiled. And that was big clue. Yeah, Ted Kluzewski. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then Pete Rose's sculpture here, that's uh, from 2017. And so, yeah, it's hard to believe that time flies. It's going to be you know, but yeah, <laughs> half a decade. <laughs> Doesn't seem that long ago. But yeah, this is definitely one of the fun and one of my favorite pieces, you know. Uh, so, you know, first of all, Pete, you know, he's, uh, he's one of my, you know, uh, tr part of my tribe, you know, from uh, Cincinnati. So, you know, got to love him. Uh, uh, made some mistakes in his life, you know, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, all around great, uh, one of the greatest of all time. And, and he's a really good guy in person. I, I love Pete, you know, and uh, he's, he's been inspiration for me because he's someone who he really puts in 110 percent or whatever he did. You know, when he played baseball, always put 110 percent. Yeah, and, and you got to you know collaborate him uh, with with him a, a little bit here, yes. uh, talking about you know a, as you're going through this process and, and talking about the downward plane of when you're sliding in and all that. So again, yeah. e even in even in something that's not baseball, he wants to get his his hands in it and he wants to kind of have his input and and still give it 110. percent Yeah, what what's neat is uh, unlike the uh, uh, plaques or Cooperstown, which are actually secret, as you know, where the players. And then the other inductees have no idea what the piece looks like until it's unveiled. The uh, the uh, sculptures we've done for Great American Ballpark, the players have been active from the very beginning, which is good. So what I would what I would do is uh, create a concept, you know, either sketch or like a clay model, like you see here, and I present it to the player and then say, hey, you know, what are your thoughts on it? What do you love, you know, what do you think? You know, that kind of thing. So, and then it's a good way to sort of pick their brain on how they, they you know, because they obviously are know a little bit more about themselves and playing baseball than I do, you know, <laughs> and so in their particular experience. So it's like, yeah, I can get some good, get some good feedback. And of course, like with the head, it's a little bit different, simpler in one sense, but when you're doing the bodies, then the poses and that, that gets really complicated. So, um, yeah. So, but again, <laughs> and there's a lot of there's a lot of specifics yeah. behind it too. Again, in, mm -hmm. in one of the photos you shared yeah. with me, you can see the three dimension of like, you know, all right, here's what you want to do, and you can probably do that with clay, I guess, with with mm -hmm. a certain amount of weight. But there's, uh, you know, steel rebar, or again, I I don't know all the specifics. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you know, but uh, don't have a degree in sculpting, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I do know it, it's it's a heavy duty process to make sure that you've got all this this bronze and, and this casting yes. hanging off the back end. You got to make sure yeah. that this doesn't crack. It's got to hold up for. I don't know, 150, 200 years. I'm not sure what the warranty is. <laughs> the warranty. Tom Sushi, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, piece of artwork. It, it's it's uh, like, uh, in, uh, I guess it's in geologic time frame. So the entire, I don't know, the Cenozoic era, whatever, you know, <laughs> how long that lasts. <laughs> yeah, luckily, like, yeah, these sculptures will last thousands of years, you know. And uh, wow. Pete was really special because I worked with a team of uh, GE uh, aviation engineers. And those are guys that, you know, when you fly on your planes, you know, from place to place, so you're flying on an airplane that's either usually powered by GE or Rolls Royce. And, uh, and the GE is actually based in Cincinnati. So uh, that's where a lot of got these smart guys that design all the jet engines. And, and uh, they helped me out. They were, those, they were the ones who designed the uh, inner, inner structure for Pete. And so it's a really fun collaboration. We had a, such an awesome time. And so initially I had this criteria that, is that I, the, the uh, Pete sculpture, which like uh, it's about like you know, from the elbow to the uh, toes would be like seven feet. So it's it's a big cantilever. And I said on that cantilever, you got to put the entire Bengals offensive line can, it can it has to be able to sit on it. And so that's like 1,700 wow. pounds or whatever, right? So the engineers, and then I said, well, it can't cost a million and a half a million dollars either. It's got to be a reasonable cost. And, you know, and, it, and it's got to be something that uh, all, the, uh, all the armature has to fit inside the body. So I don't want any armature sticking outside of Pete's arms or anything, you know. So that was sort of the criteria. And then the GE guys, you know, they came up with solutions. So it's really, really cool. And the sculpture ended up being strong enough. You can park a car on it. It's, it can hold 6,000 pounds. <laughs> you know, you can put a full size car, you know, one of those Teslas, I think Model S is way about 6,000 pounds. You could put a Tesla Model S on Pete's back, you know, so. Amazing. Yeah, 
can drive. I don't recommend you driving it up onto it, but you can. I'm it's glad fun. you threw in that disclaimer because <laughs> yeah. you know Jackass Four yeah. is coming out. I mean Jackass Five. You never yeah. know; they could just drive around in a Humvee all, all over Great American <laughs> yeah. Ballpark. And- <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You know, test but it out, saying- and and then here. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's here, here you are with, with Pete, you know, on the day yeah. that the plaque comes out. And again, he's got uh, uh, certainly mm-hmm. not a miniature version. It's not very, it's very small. It's still uh, a sizable mm-hmm. statue that you have there uh, for Pete. Yeah. And he's obviously just terribly pleased about, you know, how yeah. fantastic it, it came out. And again, that has to be some of the best feedback that you get is the person that you are you are designing, that you are replicating, loves it just as much, yeah. if not more, than you. Yes. And, you know, Pete, of course, loved it because, you know, what's, the, you know, I guess anyone who's a big Cincinnati Reds fan, we all know Pete's signature is his head first slide. You know, mm-hmm. that's, you know, there's a couple of things he's known for. Of course, obviously, he's the hit king and he always had that real distinct batting stance where he kind of crouches <laughs> down and all that. But the other, the most to me, his his best look would be as Charlie Hustle, you know, and sliding head first in a third base, you know. So, right. and then, and what's really cool, I asked uh, Pete when I was, uh, when I met with him uh, early on this early, early stage, I said, you know, why did he slide head first most of the time? You know, it's kind of dangerous, you know. And he said, because it gets you in the papers. <laughs> And and it gets a, a sculpture made after you too. Yeah, exactly. I Make mean, talk about something. thinking ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's quite the visionary. <laughs> yeah, he, he was thinking about name, image, and likeness uh, a lot, that's particularly right. the likeness part. And and it is amazing too, uh, mm-hmm. considering that that nickname was was really a, a put down. He was yeah. being mocked when he was originally called Charlie Hustle uh, yeah. by Mickey Mantle in uh, in a spring training game. Mm-hmm. Uh, do want to do want to tell you here? We got a couple more smiles here. Once we get into some of the other great work that Tom has been doing, uh, some big smiles, much like the kinds that Green Mountain Dental Group is putting on people's faces. Look, you know that the first step to good health is taking care of your mouth, and Green Mountain Dental Group has been pivotal in keeping those of us at DNVR in great shape. In that way, same is true for our DNVR listeners who've switched to Green Mountain Dental Group over the years to make them their permanent family dentist. Now, when you schedule a cleaning, X-ray, and exam, you're going to receive a free Sonicare toothbrush from Green Mountain Dental Group, located only 15 minutes from downtown Denver. All right, so take us on a tour here, Tom. You've you've got some more wonderful things, and uh, I've got some more graphics to show. But I mean, you're right there with Fiona, Tony Perez. There, we, there, we've got Pete. Yeah, we got Pete. So. Yeah, first of all, yeah, uh, the uh, the Reds made uh, I think about forty bronze castings of the this version of Pete here, and then there were like a few, only four versions that were made, kind of like a special type that features the uh, the ground here, and I got one of them, so which is really cool, and wow. right here in the studio, I'm just uh, showing it. So yeah, it's one of my uh, fun pieces, and I, I love it. <laughs> and you then. See the- you see the Larry Walker bobblehead too. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, we got Larry here. We got Larry, of course. Got this during that uh, weekend there. You know, it's pretty cool. He just looks kind of high though, a little bit. You know, but that's all right. <laughs> Whatever. You know, it's it's Colorado. I don't know. So, so at any rate, you know. And then we got. Uh, oh yeah, so this is cool. So this is one of the giveaway ones. Uh, Joe Morgan. Uh, my, uh, I grew up in, uh, you know, uh, here in Cincinnati, born and raised here, and my parents, uh, they came from Japan. And uh, of course, Japan over there, the uh, uh, baseball is the uh, the national pastime too, not sumo, but baseball. And then uh, my dad uh, was a huge mega baseball fan, and of course, became a, a huge Reds fan when he came over here late '60s. And uh, his favorite player is this guy, Joe Morgan. So it's pretty cool, you know. It it, then, mu- it must have tickled him pink to to yeah. see you side by side, Joe Morgan. Yes, working <laughs> on it and just working with it, both of your 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 heroes, really. Yeah, I mean it's just the coolest thing. And uh, unfortunately, my dad's no longer around. But you know, he just he just knew you know how cool it is, you know, is to create have 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 Joe's sculpture made. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I mean it's just extra special. And then as a little tribute, uh, I I put on the base of the sculpture at the ballpark. I I put uh, my dad's name was uh, Yoshi or Yoshiki. So I put uh, a little tribute to him. I put to Yoshi and Joe. You know, <laughs> yeah. um, it's too early to make me start crying. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's gonna kill me. It's funny because yeah. yesterday, yesterday on the Zoom call with David Ortiz, he he had his dad right next to him. I, yeah. I didn't know who the man was, but 
you know, kept, kept referring to his dad and putting his arm around him. And I just thought like, ah, oh, how, how beautiful. So I, I love that. That's a, that's, that's an amazing Easter egg. If you haven't already been convinced to go to great American ballpark to see these wonderful statues go just for that, share that story. I, I, I love that. Yeah. 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 Thanks. And then that big one that's in the back that almost looks like a big wall. I'll put it up here on oh, the yeah. screen. This is an award that I didn't know existed. And, and when you showed this to me yesterday, I was I was blown away by how cool of a an award it is. Yeah, thanks. For, for, for the John Madden Most Valuable Protectors. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, not, I think as we talked uh, yesterday a little bit, you know, just, uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Uh, they don't, uh, they're not making, they're not awarding it anymore, you know, but they were doing it for a few years. And then I think they just had some uh, sponsor, they kind of ran out of sponsorship money or, you know, and so uh, that was kind of a bummer. But yeah, it's one of my favorite pieces too, because uh, it, it captures the whole spirit of the, of the job of the offensive line. And it was a war, it's a, it was when they started, it was in 2010, I think 11, around there, yeah. And uh, they awarded to, in the, during the week leading up to Super Bowl, uh, they were the, awarded to the, uh, to the best offensive line of that year, you know, in the regular season. And so, and it just happened that, it was, yeah, the New Orleans Saints was the uh, first winner of the award. Yeah. And that coincided with the, uh, uh, the, when they went to the Super Bowl that year, is that 2010, yeah. So, and yeah, that that's a that's a beautiful yeah. statue and, yeah, again, and, and, and the idea behind it with with putting plaques of all the players' names, so adding on to it like it's a Stanley Cup. Maybe yes. someday they'll they'll bring it back. Yeah, very yeah. very short lived, and also sad to to know that sponsorship. Yeah, I think Prilosec OTC was the sponsor, yeah. and they they back out, and then all of a sudden this wonderful award that that highlights a a, a position right, a, a group of players that don't <laughs> really get a lot of acknowledgement and. Ah, that that yeah, that, that can always be frustrating, but it that, is. That's it a is. lot of uh, of what goes on in the art world, I imagine. In many yeah, ways. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, but I I guess said uh, I think you said how they said that hopefully they'll bring it back, and they, they could yeah. because the bronze is I know uh the the guy who commissioned the the uh the piece the company that was kind of handling all that he I think he has it you know you know somewhere like in you know storage or whatever so we can bring it out you know and uh, but yeah it's still one of my favorite designs you know I just thought. You know, just uh, you know, something that looks like a big giant block. You know, the job of the offensive line to protect the quarterback, and you know, and the, and you know, it's really kind of cool story too. Is that uh, I had uh, Anthony Munoz, you know, the great uh, left tackle of the Cincinnati Bengals, the legendary you know Hall of Famer. He actually consulted on the piece. I went and so he posed, you know, for these guys. You know, so it's really really cool. I went to his home. It was pretty hilarious. Oh, you know, I don't have the photo. I should uploaded that but it's hilarious so when you know so we'll get tom to come jump back in here in just a second uh maybe i'll even be able to uh he'll leave and then come back in live but we'll, we'll see if i can convince tom maybe if he if he does a, a some kind of award for podcasters maybe i can be the the sit-in for that and 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 i can be I, I can be the rose to his Jack uh, when it, when it comes to sculpting that. So yeah, Tom's done some uh, amazing things. I think I already showed uh, the, the photographs of, of Larry Walker's induction there and you know, the, the, the work in, in the artwork over at, at the Cooperstown hall of fame for these plaques, as we said, it, it goes back, we're, we're getting close to a hundred years here uh, and it has still has that same pattern that, is used on on all those plaques and and so Tom's been been doing that since 2016. Tom, I, I gotta say, if, if you ever if you have to create and sculpt an award for a podcast, I would I would love to be your model. I'd love to sit in and <laughs> yeah. you know just sit in a chair with my my hands at a at a laptop. It can't be too taxing, but but you can use me as. Uh, oh as yeah, the model. <laughs> yeah, we did the podcast. <laughs> yeah, we did like a podcast Hall of Fame thing or some award. Yeah, the best yeah. podcaster of the of the year. Yes, well, it's weird because I kind of like yeah, I got cut out there. I was like, was that in the middle of the telling the story? And I just cut out there. What happened there? Or, uh, yeah, you're talking about the Madden Most uh, Valuable yeah, yeah. Pr Protectors yeah. Award and, and how, you know, it's big, big stone. Because uh, yeah. obviously what the O-line represents protecting the QB. And uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's an amazing design. And was that one that you kind of had a lot more freedom to go? Or was there a little bit of collaboration with the NFL on that? 
yeah, this one here is a complete like my design. And that's wow. one reason it's one of my faves to example, because they just said, uh, in fact, it was kind of like a last minute thing. They, and it, it was somewhat like last minute and they were like, uh, Hey, we want to do this trophy. And then they had an idea that I didn't really care for. And I said, here, what about this design? So I, I showed them this, you know, I made a quick little scale uh, model or whatever. Someone said, Hey, what about this idea? Something that captures the spirit, shows all five guys, you know, and they look like a big block. It's symbolic. It looks like a wall, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, and then you know, they just loved it and said, let's do it. And then, so, but it was kind of a fun, exciting time because it must have been October or something. And then, and and the uh, they had to have it for January in the, and the uh, that week because I guess the the uh, the Super Bowl was February was February third third or something at that time so then and it had to be done by then so it's like we had this relatively short time period but uh, we made it happen and that's when I, I think we got cut off there I was talking about Anthony Munoz the uh, great Cincinnati left tackle he modeled for it and then so I went and visit his house and he was hanging out you know and then he modeled and posed for everything and then I was talking about how. He had these little like chihuahuas and stuff running around. He's a big dude with these tiny little dogs and wiener dogs. It was hilarious, you know. And then, uh, um, but it, I remember when we we're doing the bronze casting too. Like uh, the we had the one shot to make it perfect. If it didn't work, then we would have missed the deadline, you know. So it was like it was like a really tight thing, you know. And I remember that, you know, it's like everything had to work perfectly, and it did. <laughs> yeah. You 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 mentioned the Bengals, and yeah, obviously, of course, you know, we'll. Yeah. we'll yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens in the future. Obviously, Joe Burrows has a, has a long yes. future ahead of him. Do you ever, when you watch sports, particularly, again, in, in the Ohio area, since you've designed so many different things for Xavier University and, uh, mm -hmm. and just, just, just so much in and around the state of Ohio and in Cincinnati in particular, do you begin to, to watch sports differently as, oh, is, is this a moment? That oh, yeah. you know, I, I might be able yeah. to use again. It could be 20, 25 years down the line. But is this an iconic moment? Do you look at, at things through that lens when you watch pro sports? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. In fact, you're the first person that ever brought up something like that. Because a lot of time when people do interviews, they know uh, that that's a really insightful thing. You know, so that's really cool. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah, absolutely. And then uh, I never really thought about that until I was like, oh yeah, I do actually watch sports in a very different way now because. You know, I'm, and what I do is oftentimes I I'd save, like, a cl I say, ooh, that's a cool pose that can make a really good sculpture in the future. And I actually save the, and, or make a sketch doc, like uh, document it. And, and that's so neat. Yeah. Because when, when, uh, uh yeah, it, it's, it, it does change the way, yeah, that I watch. <laughs> that's, that's true. And in fact, I'll show you one example. I'm going to kind of walk to the studio. It's neat that you brought that up. Like this is so fortuitous that you said that because I'm gonna see. I got my uh, Johnny Bench uh, model here. So this is the scale model for Johnny Bench's sculpture at Great American. And when and it's interesting you mentioned that because if you look at here the hand, I'm gonna see if I can get it really zoomed up. Oh, yeah, shit. there's a lot of detail with the ball coming off the almost off the fingers, really. Yeah. So what I did was, and that was neat because I was inspired, actually. Uh, when I was watching one of the Reds games and uh, uh, they had like a little clip up and I, who was that? Oh, he played for the Kansas City eventually. Uh, what's his name? The pitcher. Uh, this was recent time. Uh, Edinson Volquez. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. And, and, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and then there was a, oh, no, no, it was, I'm sorry. It was Cueto. It's Cueto. Oh, Cueto yeah. Yeah, and yeah. There was a, it was interesting. And then the ball was spinning out of his hands you know, and and there's a, a good photograph that was captured at that moment where the ball was just on the tips, you know, and I thought, oh, that might be a kind of a neat way to depict us, you know, in the future, some sculpture, some kind of anything where the you know, ball is being thrown. And so I always kept that in mind that when I came to working on uh, Johnny's sculpture, that's what happened. I, I thought instead of the ball just, in, you know, just firmly in his grip, it's actually spinning out of on his uh, fingers. So that was a case of, yeah, where watching sports in a different way helped shape a sculpture. It's pretty cool. That's yeah. beautiful. I, I I would hope Johnny, you know, if you guys go out to dinner at some point, Johnny's going to pick up the tab uh, for you. Tony Perez, all those guys say, hey, oh, you yeah, know what? They've done that. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, in fact, it was neat. Like, you know, when I, I, I got to visit Tony at his home and uh, – uh, Puerto Rico, and, and it's kind of odd. It took, it took me out to like, uh, we had this awesome, uh, authentic 
uh, Caribbean lunch and has like like red snapper and all this stuff and you know he cheated and everything. It's awesome. And then yeah, and then I visited Johnny down in Florida. So it was kind of fun, you know, to yeah to uh, to uh, uh, go in their element and uh, you know talk with them. <laughs> yeah, I should I should treat them, you know, <laughs> you know, because they 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 made my life uh, a lot more fun, you know, and a lot more enjoyable, you know. And and you know even before they they became the legends you know or like you know be you know in, you know immortalized in bronze you know it's always been a joy to f uh, follow their greatness. <laughs> yeah, you know, go, going back to to your work with with the Cincinnati Reds, I have to imagine mm -hmm. as as an artist again, you want as many people as possible to see it. You also want it to be to be highlighted in mm -hmm. in your world. I, and I imagine this is true probably for for so many sculptures. It's something that is is always going to be available for free for people because it's it's made to be outside it's made to be enjoyed in that yes. capacity and so uh you know the hall of fame buy a ticket you go in it's a beautiful it's a special place and and it has that that history going back to the the first class and babe ruth satchel page jackie robinson we know but these larger sculptures like in cincinnati uh as well as all all around the state of ohio and uh, round rock and, and san diego people are able to enjoy it for free even if there's not a game in the middle of the winter yeah absolutely and i think that's really great especially because in some of these downtown settings you know if there's no game going on or whatever and it'd be kind of dead looking you know and but with the sculptures you know people actually go around and hang out like yeah during the off season you know go and take photos kind of hang out walk around and you know you know and you know just it, it's something that helps yeah, it, it not only yeah, just a symbolic you know of and, and way to honor, honor, honoring the the player, but yeah, it's just something that kind of is a beautif beautifies the you know the place you know makes the place a little enhances the uh, you know the 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 color and life of a, of a town <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and as an artist, it's great where you, you like it when the general public and people can you know uh, you know can be moved by the work and uh, enjoy the work you know and and for free yeah it's. Uh, it's it's great. All right, final question here, Tom. Before we uh, we we get going, mm -hmm. I, I know you can't I can't show you can't show us anything that you're working on for these these seven plaques for a very large class too, mind mm -hmm. you. Like there's only been I think eleven mm -hmm. classes in the you know eighty some years of of inductees that have had seven or more. But yeah. when when's the first time that you I'm not going to say put pen to paper, but you put uh, scalpel to, uh, to <laughs> yeah. clay, if you will. When does that first, you know, a step start when you're making the plaques for the class of 2022? Yeah, it's actually uh, uh, very soon um, because uh, right now I've been uh, designing the uh, the uh, the plaques all on the computer, everything, you know, all that digital stuff, and then actually it'll probably even you know start like uh, I could I could even do what i want even beginning like later today after we get off you know or or as we talk you know <laughs> and as we finish up you know uh because i basically like here the first thing i'm gonna do is put clay into the into the little well here and then uh so usually what i i, I always believe that planning ahead is the most important thing so i take my time you know, plan everything very carefully, get the design exactly where you want to look at the general compositions and then go and, you know, hit the clay. So for example, well, typically I just had some other projects going on this year. So you ordinarily I might even be already starting on the, uh, the veterans committee inductees already, um, you know, but right now I'm just going to probably start, you know, in the next you know day or two, you know, um, but uh, typically I would be working really even beginning of January, you know, you know, on those guys, you know, so could they announce them as, you know, like in the beginning of December, you know, and then, um, then, you know, then of course through the holidays, we said, I want to take a break and then we're kind of back to work, but, uh, I'm confident it, you know, I got, I got assistants that help me out and, you know, they're really great. So, you know, we all kind of work together and, uh, make sure that, uh, you know, that the plaques look awesome and, uh, yeah, we get, get them moving, uh, in time for induction weekend this July, <laughs> so. July 24th. Yeah. You got your work cut out for you. They, they, they brought you yeah. in, in, in 2016 with two guys, Piazza and Griffey. Yeah. And they said, yeah, no, it'll be great, Tom. You'll be the official guy. Yeah. And, and yeah. here you go. You've got like six guys, like the last yeah. three yeah. years, they got seven this year. Yeah. Exactly. I think they're trying to kill you slowly, but surely Tom, they, they are. Yeah. But, 
but I'm, I'm dying. They're killing people with a smile and I'll die with a smile. So that's the important thing. Yes. <laughs> you're, up the, you're up for the challenge. If anyone yeah. can do it, Tom, it is yeah. you. Tom, yeah. thank you so much. Hey, you know, I know you're not on Twitter, but on Instagram, you know, you can see mm -hmm. photographs of everything that Tom has been working on. Uh, see the wonderful hippopotamus, Fiona, if you don't know what that is. Yeah. You're yeah. going to fall in love with that. Yeah, there there yeah. she is. Yeah. Uh, some of the work you, you've done around uh, in, in your area for, for donating uh, food for those less fortunate and, and for recycling with the Phoenix. So didn't mm -hmm. get enough time to talk about that, but you can see all of that over uh, on Tom's Instagram page where you're, uh, you're very active. And, and Tom, it great meeting you last year. Great having you on today. When Cincinnati comes into town, you got a place to stay here. And uh, when <laughs> yeah. Colorado goes out to Cincinnati, uh, you best believe I, I'm going to have to be in the building so we can hang out again. And likewise. Yeah. Come to come visit Cincinnati. You're going to, Catch a game here at Great American. <laughs> I love it, Tom. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, again, you can follow us on Twitter at DNVR underscore Rockies. Remember, it's only 50 cents for your first month of subscription at the DNVR.com. I'm at Patrick D. Lyons on Twitter. So for DNVR Sports, he's Tom Sushia. I'm Patrick Lyons. And you know what they say about momentum? It's only as good as tomorrow's podcast. So I'll talk to you then. 